The 118th Congress officially kicked off this week after last week's four-day speaker election, which ended with Kevin McCarthy winning the gavel on the 15th ballot. House Republicans have since hit the ground running, bringing up several pieces of legislation during their first week in the majority. The focus of the bills range from the IRS to China to abortion, giving a sense of what the House GOP will prioritize in the current Congress. They also created two new committees. Here's what happened in the House during the first legislative week of the 118th Congress. The first order of business for the House this week was adopting a rules package, which will govern how the chamber operates in the 118th Congress. The package was central to last week's speaker fight. McCarthy allies and holdouts negotiated its terms, which helped the California Republican secure the gavel. One key rules concession from McCarthy, and the most controversial one, was a single-member motion to vacate the chair, which allows just one lawmaker to force a vote on ousting the speaker. McCarthy brought the threshold for the motion down from half the majority of the conference to five members, and then down to one, giving in to requests from conservative lawmakers. The package ultimately passed in a 220 to 213 vote, and just one Republican, Tony Gonzalez of Texas, voted no. Next up on Tuesday, House Republicans brought their first bill to the floor, a measure that would rescind the bulk of the IRS funding boost that Democrats approved in the Inflation Reduction Act last year. That roughly $80 billion was generally aimed at boosting high-income enforcement, but Republicans claimed that the funds would be used to hire 87,000 new IRS agents, a point that's not true. Those IRS agents would be set up to go after hardworking families across this country. The department said the number includes other employees in addition to agents, and it also accounts for replacements for employees who are expected to resign or retire within the next six years. Shortly before Tuesday's vote, the Congressional Budget Office estimated that the bill would increase deficits by $114 billion over the next decade. McCarthy, for months, had teased the measure as the first piece of legislation Republicans would take up if they won the majority of the House. It's formally titled the Family and Small Business Taxpayer Protection Act, and it passed in a party-line vote 221 to 210, but it's unlikely to move in the Democratic-controlled Senate. Wednesday's focus was committees. The House passed two resolutions creating new panels to zero in on U.S. competition with China and another to probe what Republicans call the weaponization of the federal government. The China Select Committee resolution passed in an overwhelmingly bipartisan vote. The final tally was 365 to 65. The panel, chaired by Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher, will look into strategic competition between Beijing and Washington. The weaponization resolution passed in a party-line 221 to 211 vote. The subcommittee, led by GOP Congressman Jim Jordan, is expected to scrutinize ongoing investigations at the Justice Department and FBI. On Wednesday, the House voted on two abortion measures, marking the first abortion-related legislation from the GOP majority since the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade over the summer. The chamber passed the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, which would require that infants born alive after attempted abortions receive the same degree of care than any other premature child would. There are 220 yeas and the nays are 210 with one present. The bill is passed. The second measure was a resolution condemning attacks on anti-abortion facilities and groups. The text listed a number of attacks against anti-abortion institutions that took place between when the ruling overturning Roe leaked and when the court officially published its opinion. The incidents included vandalism and igniting and throwing Molotov cocktails. The measure passed in another largely party-line vote, 222 to 219. And finally, the House completed its first legislative week on Thursday with a bill that seeks to prohibit sales from the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve to entities owned, controlled, or influenced by the Chinese Communist Party, unless that oil will not be sent to China. The vote was bipartisan. 331 lawmakers supported its passage, with only 97 voting no and all the opposition came from Democrats. House Republicans did a lot in the first legislative week of the 118th Congress, the first time they held the majority in four years, and we're likely to see much more legislation over the next two years.